today we're going to talk about Phyllis Flynn. Phyllis was born on May 7, 1965. She grew up in this house in Lincoln Park, Michigan. On May 7, 1988 was Phyllis's 23rd birthday. She was celebrating with her family, having a good old time, and then after her celebrations were all done, she asked her father if he would drop her off at Hotel Yorba near southwest Detroit so she could visit her alleged boyfriend named Albert Jimenez. And I wanted to mention here that her family never met Albert. They didn't know anything. So they didn't know how old he was. They didn't know what he looked like. Nothing nothing about this guy. Her dad dropped her off. Then a few days pass, uh, May 13th, Phyllis calls her parents and asks to be picked up from Hotel Yorba. So her father drives to Hotel Yorba. He gets there and at the doors of the hotel, two men are standing there and they tell him that Phyllis is gone. She had left the hotel. So that already is a little suspect that Phyllis called to be picked up, but she's not there. Her father left, went back home, whatever, wherever he went to. A couple weeks passed by and Phyllis had still not been in contact with any of her family at all. So she allegedly had a habit of disappearing from sight, running off, She was apparently known to law enforcement as well. So after these couple weeks passed and Phyllis missed her sister's going away party, her sister was moving to Arizona for a job. So Phyllis missed that. That's when her parents really began to get super concerned and knew that something was very wrong. Her family contacted the police and it actually took a a couple weeks before the police department would even open a missing persons case on Phyllis. So all this time is going by and she's out there somewhere. Who knows? Who knows where she, where she even is. And all this time is going by when someone's missing. I would think that time would be like, you don't want to waste a minute. You got to find that person. You have to do everything you can. And here we are. There's a couple weeks And now, finally, they're opening a missing persons report. Very little is even known about this Albert guy. Very, again, as I mentioned, very little. Her parents didn't even know what he looked like. He allegedly checked into Hotel Yorba in 1987 and checked out of the hotel in January of 1989. That is approximately, give or take, nine months from when Phyllis went missing in May to then that following January that this man was still at this motel, right? He was still at Hotel Yorba. So what I'd like to know is, in those nine months, what type of conversations did law enforcement have or try to initiate with Albert? That's, kind of, that, that's really what, I, what I'm wondering what transpired? Did they even find him? What? And those those two men that met her, that Phyllis's father outside the doors of the hotel, maybe one of them was Albert. We don't really know who those two men are. And it's not even known who they are to this very day, 34 years later. Not even known. No one has been able to locate Albert at all. I'm going to say that much. He's allegedly from Jamaica. Supposedly, we don't really even know if that's accurate or not. But it's, it's been said. So we'll, we'll say perhaps he may be from Jamaica. No one even knows what the original detective that worked on Phyllis's missing person case even did. No one knows who he questioned in this investigation. Nobody even knows where the original missing person report is. So that's missing as well. Phil, Phyllis has been gone for 34 years now. Who knows? No one's apparently even heard from Albert either in that amount of time. We'll say that perhaps they're both missing, that they could be missing together. They could be missing separately. We really don't know. There's so many things that could have happened here. You know, there's so many things. In my opinion, Albert lived at this hotel for two years, 
I find it so hard to believe that no one would even know who he is because assuming that he would need his ID to check into this motel. Being there for two years, he had to have known somebody, front desk person who, who maybe there was someone who cleaned the rooms that knew him, maintenance people. There had to have been somebody, especially a two-year stay, you know, you would think. You would think, I mean, this is 1988. This is not 1888. This is not 1788. Generally, you would have to have ID, I believe, to check in. I'm Any motel I've been to, you need your ID. Come on. Now, I'm not, I don't know if I'm buying all that, right? But I feel like the ball was really dropped here so many times, and it's a real shame to me. She could really be out there with so many resources, you know, today, but back in 1988, we could still do better, you know, than this. There were so many resources that could have been used that were not to find her. So she could very well be out there living her best life anywhere. In Jamaica, she could be living it up. And, you know, I'm going to, in all honesty, she could have, unfortunately, met her demise on her after that day in, in, in May of 1988. You know, we, we really don't know. But I believe it's very possible she's still alive and out there, given that so few resources were used to try to locate her. But one way or another, neither scenario is great. She's not been in contact with her brother and sister for over 34 years. Her parents have both since passed away. So it's a tragedy, in my opinion, just my opinion. It's a tragedy either way. I hope that someone out there knows something. I, I believe someone out there has to know something. Someone out there may even know something they don't even really know that they know. So I would definitely encourage anybody that was on or in that area around that time, maybe even that stayed in that hotel during that time and are listening to me right now, think back to that and see if there's anything that you can recall. And let's hope that uh, her, parent, her, her parents, of course, are passed away, but I would love to see Phyllis's siblings get some answers. Again, this was, this was a hard, hard case for me because there's so little on this woman. Very little exists on her. So wherever you are, Phyllis, I hope, ever, hope you're doing okay.